Well, I think it was very exciting for all our players, coaches, uh, staff. We had our trainer uh, out there skating and equipment managers. It's such a historic ballpark, and I feel very fortunate being a diehard Red Sox fan and coming to this park for so many years and being able to, I think this is my third time now participating in this event. And uh, it never gets old, I'll say that. And just to see the excitement on our players' faces going out there, I think that's what why we all play the game. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, the whole Frozen Fenway experience. Questions? I was, I was practicing when I was when I was coming. It was pretty windy, so windy out there. It was one big gust. Yeah. I, it, you know, it wasn't that bad. Coach, you mentioned this is your third time doing it. So what were those first two times like for you, just um, experiencing Frozen Fenway? Yeah, the first time was the first one, and I think it was thirty-five thousand people there, and it was. It was, it was cold, uh, and uh, much to my chagrin, my assistant Joe Pereira got the game winner on us that night. So, uh, but you know what? It was a it was a really unique experience. It was great for our team that year because it was such a crazy atmosphere and big atmosphere and big game, and we didn't play that well. And I think we learned a lot from that, and we, we went on to win a national title that year. And I think a lot of it had to do with us uh, kind of playing scared in that in a big game. Uh, so I do re like kind of remember that experience. It was it was a wild, wild night. It was a crazy night. The second one, we played in the afternoon, so that was a different experience as well. And uh, it wasn't quite as cold, but it was just still, I realized then it was more about our players than, than anything else. As coaches, after a while, you're like, it's a hard game to coach. It's very different than anything else. And, Sometimes you can get frustrated with it, but it's more about the players. And, and that's what I realized with the second one, that the whole frozen Fenway is for the players' uh, experience. And I think that's you know, what it should be about. How do you help them kind of find that balance of knowing that this is an important game, but it's also such an incredible experience? Well, I think they know that. Uh, you know, we've talked about it a lot as a team. And, uh, it's, it's an important game for Maine, too. We're both fighting for league points. so. I think both teams, and I think if you asked the four teams last week, there were important points in those games. So while it's a different experience, it's different for both teams. We both have to deal with the same variables. And, uh, we'll just put our best foot forward tomorrow. Uh, you, you've coached in it twice. Uh, Pereira played in it. Uh, Maine, I'm not sure how much experience they have, but I don't think it's that much. Uh, do you see that as an advantage from them? No, because I don't play. So um, I don't see that as an advantage. And Maine played it two years ago, I believe. So they probably have a lot of players that have played in this game. So if anything, they have a little more experience in it than we do. But at the end of the day, hockey's hockey. It ranks a rank. And uh, the team, I think, that plays best tomorrow will be the team that comes away with the two points. Derek, you're a Massachusetts guy, but a Yankees fan. What's it like to play at Fenway Park? It's, it's pretty special. Um, I know I've answered that question a few times. And um, I grew up a, Red, a Yankees fan, and uh, I guess I'm. No, it, it doesn't make a difference now, but um, I've been to Red Sox, Red Sox Yankees games, Red Sox games, and um, what a historic ballpark this is. So it's really special. What was it like just to practice out there today? Just kind of get a feel for everything. It was cool. It was neat just looking around. Uh, the ice wasn't perfect, but it wasn't perfect when I was 10 years old skating in my backyard either. So um, it was pretty cool. Same thing, Evan. Yeah, obviously, uh, being a Canadian kid, you don't really grow up thinking you're going to get the chance to play at Fenway Park. But when you get out there, you step on the ice. It's kind of just the visual aspect is so it's so crisp and so vivid. It's something that um, you really just got to try and take in. It's something that you don't think you're going to get to do, but when you get to do it, it's you got to feel pretty special. Evan's a Blue Jays fan, so we get the AL East coming. <laughs> <laughs> you got some Orioles and Rays fans in the lineup too. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know how we do. Uh, maybe you guys can both talk. You know, he mentioned that you understand there's points on the line in this important game. The kind of oh wow factor. When you, you kind of get that out of your system today, is that what today is a little bit about? You get to go out and look at that before you get going? I think a little bit. Yeah, I think maybe the looking into the 
end of the stands will maybe be less tomorrow, and, and it comes down to two uh, really important league points for us. So, um, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I think it was cool just to see like that big poppy signs up, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts on the one out in center there. That was pretty cool. It's something that you know we want to really look at tomorrow. We got that out of the way. Uh, Coach gave us a little bit of time at the end of practice to kind of do what we wanted. So a bunch of us kind of stood there and just took it all in. Anyone try to hit the wall with the puck? I outlawed that. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a lot colder tomorrow. Are there any additional preparations that you guys take when playing um, in an outdoor game? I don't think so. Uh, I think. Once, once the puck drops, it's, you're just focusing on hockey, and uh, maybe the wind chill might be a, a bit of a factor, but I don't think so. Coach, when we talked about this a couple weeks ago, you were very excited to be the man. Was that thrill still, still there today? Walking out there today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, I'd never been in the visitors' clubhouse. That was pretty cool, too. I know Tommy McLaughlin, he was over there for a long time. Uh, now he's, a, he's in the home clubhouse now. John Coyne is a guy I know who works here with, uh, he was at PC when I was here. Um, so it, it was great coming in today. Uh, you know, when you first, like Derek says, when you walk in here and you get to participate in this, it's, it's exciting. So the same for you guys, just kind of walking around the entire ballpark, not necessarily just being on the ice? I think one of the coolest things is just the, you know, the names that have been in this building, um, walking down that tunnel and you know, making some of the, some of the people that have been in this building yeah, just what Derek just said, we were walking through the tunnel and just all the greats that have kind of walked through that same thing. Um, it's pretty cool that we're walking through there with skates on. Well, a couple of years ago, there was a lot made about the goal celebrations. Has there been any talk, like if something happens, maybe someone's got, got some special plan? <laughs> we haven't got that far yet. Yeah. Maybe let you got to score goals first. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach, um, obviously you had the good win uh, last night versus me and Resilient win coming out of those two ties uh, they had during the game. Uh, if you can speak a little bit about, I guess, what you, you know, you've been in many of these back-to-back -back games uh, through the years coaching, what you're expecting from Maine and what you're telling your team as far as considering you're in a little bit of a different atmosphere, what you're looking for your team to do when they take that ice for that first period of the You know, I think when you're playing a game like this, the, you have to keep the game simple, especially early, to get a feel for your environment. Because it can be totally different tomorrow than what we experienced today. So I think if I was to guess, Maine's probably going to do the same thing. You want to keep it simply, you want to chip puck and get them out of your zone and get them deep on the other team and try to establish a four check. Uh, and then as I started talking about that, I'm like, how's that any different than how we played them last night? It's kind of the same thing we wanted to do last night. So I think it's pretty much uh, you get to this point in the season where it's January, you're not implementing any new systems. Uh, the team, has a pretty good feel for how we want to play, and now it's just going out and executing. And I think that's going to be the most important part. And you're going to have to understand there's going to be a bad bounce. There's going to be, someone's going to fall down because of a guy's condition. It's just going to happen. And you just got to be able to deal with it and move on. Who's the, who's the most excited coming into that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some of the big Red Sox fans. I think we all are, to be honest. <laughs> I think Pereira was. He had to redo, he relived his goal for about six times. Reliving the Lariat? Yeah, he was showing everybody. Is that something that you guys still talk about? Like, I don't oh. talk about it. I <laughs> uh, Black, is there a consensus? Yeah, yeah. I think all, I think all of us wore it today. So, uh, wouldn't be surprised if we all just wore it too. Baseball guys don't really know if it helps. It looks good. Uh, yeah. It looks good. Yeah. Coaches will not be wearing it. Thank <laughs> you.